Hey guys. Well, like I promised, I'm pretty much jumping right into the next set of readings I've got lined up. Uh, and today's is really long, too, so I'm just going to get right along with it. This one is a Klopfic, uh, as I said last time, sent to me by Fang Damonstein. He was very nice about this, and I hope he and everyone else enjoys this fic. I myself skimmed it right after I read his comments, and I absolutely adored it. It's called White Wine by Doom Guy, a fantastic writer who is very sadly no longer with us. Um, this is another second-person uh, human ex-pony story, this time involving Rarity, who I, of course, love to pieces. And I've been super excited to read this one for y'all. So I guess let's get going, shall we? Thanks again for listening, and I hope you enjoy this one as much as I did. White Wine by Doom Guy. You closed the door behind you and slumped against the wall, loosening your tie and checking your watch. It was just past eleven. The cramped little studio apartment was stuffy and dark. You made your way over to one of the windows and slid it open. A cooling breeze reached your face. Without proper air conditioning, you weren't relishing the thought of a summer's impending heat. Nor were you looking forward to the idea of being back on the job hunt. Now that Rarity was heading home, her business was dissolved, the vast portfolio of her designs were sold off, and you were left looking for employment. Not that any of this had come as a surprise to you. The first time you'd suggested the idea of being her marketing advisor, she'd informed you that her stay was temporary and would last at best another nine months. Sure enough, she was true to her word, and while the two of you had grown the little boutique in size by tenfold, she still wanted to go home. You recalled the first few days you'd spent as business partners with Rarity. One of the only things she'd stipulated was your complete honesty and integrity with her. And when the discussion of why you'd involved yourself in marketing came up, you thought it best to show her, not tell her. Your upbringing was far from poor, but still certainly lower class. Marketing was a means to an end for you, and that end was money. So you showed her the most expensive neighborhoods in Hollywood, the pompous gated communities and million-dollar mansions. You took her to an exotic car dealership and sat with her in a white Rolls Royce. The two of you went wine tasting. Throughout the entire day, you pointed out all the expensive things you would have and do in the future, and that marketing was your path to them. Rarity seemed to very much enjoy the showcase of the finest things Los Angeles had to offer, but you found yourself regretting it the very next day. You were certain that you'd come across as either arrogant, materialistic, or perhaps both. Maybe you were, but the white unicorn dismissed your worries. She told you that the Earth was a very different place from her home, but that she understood what was driving you. Nine months later, you found yourself here, alone in a little apartment north of L.A., a sizable check gifted to you from your former employer. The mayor had given it to you earlier in the evening, at a celebratory dinner that you, Rarity, and your girlfriend had attended. At the start of dinner, she made the announcement of how much she'd sold her boutique for. Then she presented you with a check for 10% of the business. At first you declined, but she persisted throughout the evening until you accepted. You also learned that the rest of the money had gone to assorted charities supporting housing developments for the poor. Rarity was truly the most generous creature you knew, and had it not been for your girlfriend's insistence on making a scene, the night would have been completely pleasant, aside from the fact that you were losing a business partner and a close friend. That could have gone better, you muttered to yourself, shedding the blazer and slipping out of your shoes. You switched the television on and dove onto the couch, a cold drink in your hands. You aimlessly flipped through the channels, hoping to find something worth watching. After a few minutes, you gave up, unsure of what to do with yourself. Rarity would be leaving in the morning, and you'd offered to drive her to the airport. She'd laughed and told you that while it was sweet to suggest, her teleportation scroll worked anywhere. 
So that left you with the short-lived goodbye you shared at the entrance to her apartment, made slightly awkward by the conflict that had occurred earlier in the evening. As you continued to mentally run through the events of the night, a door knock startled you. At first you assumed it was Sarah, but you knew she wasn't particularly fond of knocking. She preferred pounding on the door. This knock was softer, more delicate, one you'd come to recognize. You opened the door to find Rarity standing before you. The little white unicorn stood in the hallway, a fine coat draped over her figure, and a pair of gift-wrapped boxes magically levitating behind her. I've come bearing gifts, she said with a beaming smile. You invited her in. You know, typically in human culture, it's customary for the person leaving to receive gifts. Oh, where's the fun in that? She replied, making her way into the apartment. Can I take your coat? Yes, thank you. A shimmering blue light engulfed the garment and lifted it upward. The two gift boxes continued to float gracefully in the air, while Rarity handed the coat to you. The first-hand display of magic was still a remarkable thing to you, even though you'd seen it a thousand times before. Beneath the coat, Rarity was still wearing the smart little dress you'd seen earlier, jet black and made out of a fabric resembling silk. It was decorated with sapphire accents and stitching that matched her eyes. She wore black shoes to complete the ensemble. As you went to hang the coat, you heard the unzipping of her dress behind you. Rarity paused as you turned around. You don't mind, do you? Of course not, you replied. The first time the mare undressed in front of you was awkward, but she quickly explained that covering oneself in clothing was not the norm in Equestria. It was reserved for special events. As a result, most ponies that resided on Earth would typically shed their clothes in the privacy of their homes, but they were still strongly encouraged to dress in public, apparently to the discomfort of many of them. As the two of you grew closer, Rarity began spending more and more time in your apartment, with discussions pertaining to the growth of her business, and eventually spreading to a variety of other topics. When she grew comfortable enough to request that she remove her clothes in your home, you hardly hesitated. You happily took it as a sign of trust, something that wasn't easy to find in business. I don't know how you humans do it, Rarity sighed, obviously relieved to be free of the encumbering clothing. I do love fashion, but it can be tiresome to wear clothes all the time. You unicorns have your magic, we humans have ours. You can't possibly be suggesting that tolerance for discomfort is magic. So you want to debate semantics? Of course not, she replied, batting her eyes with a smug smile. A debate would imply that both sides have merit. You're a riot, Rarity. Yes, humor is one of my many talents. She tilted her chin upwards with an air of superiority. She was obviously joking. Don't forget modesty. No, we mustn't forget that. She kicked her shoes off before neatly organizing and placing them near the apartment door. And I hardly forget anything. The largest of the two boxes floated over you and dropped into your hands. Now sit. I want you to open this first. Right, boss. Rarity sighed and rolled her eyes. How many times must we go over this? We are partners. You are my associate. I know. I just love seeing you get flustered. You smirked, leading her from the door. Flustered? Hardly. A lady does not get flustered. You took a seat on the living room couch, the artfully decorated box still in your hands. Rarity excitedly jumped up on the cushion next to you, her perfume wafting over to your nose. She always smelled nice. Every day there was something different about her scent, something subtle, but you could never put your finger on it. Well, are you going to just stare at the box? The white mare tossed her mane with impatience. You open the lid and reveal the jacket of a tailored suit. Rarity's logo was on the inside of the collar. The charcoal garment looked unlike anything you'd seen before. Every detail, from the stitching to the cut to the assembly, was absolutely flawless. It was a far cry from the bargain-priced suits you'd seemingly made a habit of buying. This is... superb. Oh, that silver tongue of yours. She waved a hoof dismissively. You'll make me blush. No, really, you turned to her. 
This is beautiful. Some of your best work. Rarity smiled proudly. I thought you might need a handsome new suit. You will be looking for a job again, and who would turn you down with this? You stood up and slipped into the jacket. The fit was perfect. What do you think? Rarity stood up on her hind legs and used her forehooves to pull the jacket flush against your shoulders. Her horns shimmered and you felt your tie straighten and tighten around your neck. When she was satisfied, she sat back down on the couch and looked you up and down. You look marvelous, she continued to speak as you took your seat. I know you've always wanted an Armani. No, you gently interrupted. You leaned over, wrapping an arm around her, and pulled her into a hug. This is far better. Thank you, Rarity. You're very welcome, darling. As you embraced, you felt one of Rarity's hooves run up and down your back. Before you had a chance to think about it, you felt her push against you and separate. There's something wrong, isn't there? Am I that transparent? you asked. No, quite the contrary, actually. But what is it? You leaned over to retrieve the check from your pocket. It's about the money. Was ten percent not enough? I know it won't buy a fancy sports car, but... You shook your head. It's not the amount, Rarity. I can't take this money from you. The white mare looked at the check and then back to you. This is money you earned. It wasn't part of the original agreement. Besides, you paid me a salary. Rarity shrugged. Then consider it a bonus. You know there's no monetary exchange between our worlds yet. And even if I could use it, there would be no reason to. I'm very comfortable back home. So are my friends and family. I still don't feel right taking it. And that is precisely why you should. I know you say money is what motivates you. Rarity smiled, bringing a hoof to the center of your chest and pushing lightly. But I very much think it's your heart. You couldn't help but feel slightly flushed at the unicorn's touch. She continued to speak. I want you to keep the check, and I will not hear any more of it. You nodded, hoping she couldn't see your face properly in the muted light. Okay. Marvelous. Now, how about your second gift? Rarity magically levitated another smaller yet slightly heavier box into your hands. It was just as painstakingly assembled as the last. Rarity never seemed to be one to skimp on details. You pulled the cover off and found a bottle of white wine stored within. But this wasn't just any wine. You knew the faded and stained label well. It was a vintage you'd shown her on the first week of your partnership, the day you took her around Los Angeles. It was a bottle you told her you were going to buy when you became a millionaire. You couldn't believe she remembered. You picked up the bottle. This is a thousand dollar bottle of wine. Yes, I do recall your interest in it. I know you're not a millionaire yet, but I thought tonight would be worth celebrating. I had intended to give it to you at dinner, but, well, you know. You didn't know what to say. Thank you. Of course, darling, she replied, slipping off the couch and returning to the floor. Shall I get us two glasses? Please. The white mare walked off in front of you and into the kitchenette. As you read over the bottle's label, you were startled by a jarring, repeated thump on the apartment door. You rubbed your eyes, setting the bottle down. This wouldn't end well. You opened the door and found Sarah, with an apologetic expression painted across her face. Hi. Hi, Sarah. I wanted to apologize. It's not me you should be apologizing to. She groaned, allowing herself in and closing the door behind her. Don't you ever take my side? How could I side with that display at the restaurant? And you ordered that steak on purpose. You know it makes them uncomfortable. Rarity spoke from the kitchenette as soon as she heard your girlfriend's voice. Sarah, can I offer you a glass of wine? Sarah's eyes narrowed and she shot you an angry glare. What is she doing here? Her voice fell to an irritated whisper. Talking. And you don't have to whisper talking at 11.30 at night? 
With every word, she grew louder. You rubbed your eyes again. Yes, it happens. I thought you said she was leaving. She stopped herself as Rarity approached the two of you. Sarah stared at Rarity, dumbfounded, before turning to you with disgust. She was barely audible. Where are her clothes? Calm down, this isn't what it looks- WHERE ARE HER CLOTHES?! She practically shrieked, her voice carried throughout the apartment. You don't understand, Sarah. This is how they look in their homes. Oh, in their homes? Sarah cut you off. Then why is she naked in your apartment? Rarity attempted to calm her down. Sarah, I know this looks dreadful, but... Shut up! You aren't part of this! She hissed. You began to lose your temper. Sarah calmed down. She shook her head. I have had enough of this. The late night talks, the phone calls, all those looks. Even tonight at dinner, she was practically blowing you with her eyes. Nothing is going on between us. Bullshit! Sarah took a moment to regain what little composure she had left. I'm going to make this very simple for you. She leaves right now, or I do. Part of you understood why Sarah felt the way she did. Rarity and you did seem to spend an inordinate amount of time together, but you had done nothing wrong and you'd always been faithful to her, and Sarah's possessiveness, jealousy, and paranoia were becoming too much for you. As your anger grew, it became clearer and clearer in your mind. Rarity spoke again. Perhaps I should... You held a hand up to stop her and looked Sarah right in the eyes. You come to my home, insult my guest, question my integrity, and give me an ultimatum? Sarah nodded, arms folded, determined to make her point. Get the hell out. You saw a flash of regret before venomous anger contorted her face. She whirled around and ripped the door open. Don't call me again. Don't worry. Sarah uttered one last word before she slammed the door. Horse fucker. You and Rarity stood in absolute silence. The white mare had a disturbed expression. It was a few seconds before you spoke. I'm sorry, Rarity. Yes, I'm sorry too. For you, your breakup. You nodded. Yeah, that was awkward. I was looking for the corkscrew. Check the cabinet by the sink. It took a moment for Rarity to rejoin you on the couch. She brought the pair of wine glasses floating behind her. She hesitated a moment before climbing onto the seat next to you. She set the glasses down. Was this my fault? No, you replied. This was her fault. She was pretty paranoid. You weren't the first girl she brought this up about. Rarity seemed to relax a little. Oh, that's good. I mean... Not good. That's unfortunate. Couldn't find the corkscrew? You could tell that the white mare was still not sure how to respond to what had happened. Forgive me. My mind seems to be elsewhere. Let me find it. You rose from your seat and made your way to the kitchen. As you looked around for the corkscrew, your mind couldn't help but draw comparisons between your former relationship with Sarah and your current one with Rarity. Rarity was kind, worldly, intelligent, and generous. She had a strong sense of conviction, but she was never overbearing. She would challenge you, your opinions, your beliefs, the very notions you had of the world around you. And while she occasionally indulged in melodrama, the two of you never fought. You felt like every discussion you'd ever had added to you in some way, and that you'd be losing a significant part of yourself when she left. Sarah, by contrast, was an angry young woman. She'd acted as if the world owed her everything. She'd made it a point to inform you each and every day about society's ills and failings, how it was driving itself to inevitable collapse, and that every effort should be made to seize as much of it for yourself as possible. Every time you'd had a conversation with Sarah, it was nothing but negativity, and it grew exhausting to hear, day in and out. But when you were with Rarity, you were happy. There was a pleasant uneasiness around the unicorn, almost like butterflies in the pit of your stomach. You weren't sure why, 
but at that moment you looked back over the counter to the white mare. She was reclined on the couch, graceful as ever, hind legs crossed, head perched on one of her forehooves. She magically held the wine bottle mid-air as she studied its label. For some reason, it felt as if it was the first time you'd ever seen her. The sparkling glitter in her fur reflected off the soft light from the living room. It shimmered like a sea of exquisite diamonds set amongst the backdrop of her flawless alabaster coat. You smiled inwardly, realizing how appropriate the marks on her flank were, and how beautiful she really was. Rarity spotted your lingering eyes and looked to her side. Is there something on me? You shook your head, your train of thought coming to an abrupt stop. Sorry, no. Still just looking for the corkscrew. Rarity furrowed a brow, smiling. You mean the one you're holding? You looked down to find the corkscrew in your hand. You grinned, somewhat embarrassed. So it is. You once again joined Rarity on the couch, and she magically handed the bottle to you. As you drove the screw into place, she spoke. You had that look about you. You stopped. What look? That look where you're thinking deeply about something. You finished driving the corkscrew in. I just do that to appear deep. Don't be silly. It's about Sarah, isn't it? No. Well, yes, I guess. You want her back? God, no. Rarity sat forward. But you've been together for as long as I've known you. Do you not feel hurt? You set the bottle down, sighing. We should have separated months ago. I guess I thought she would change. Or hoped. Maybe that was unfair. Rarity leaned towards you, propping herself on the back of the couch. If I may be so bold, what made you fall for her? We met at the end of college, and I guess I liked her because she was like me. How so? Angry. Cynical. Acted like everybody was out to get us. That seemed to confuse the white unicorn. I've never seen that side of you before. Well, I suppose I've changed. I haven't been that way for the better part of a year. Rarity leaned forward, a delicate smile on her lips. And who or what brought about this change? We may never know, you reply with a smile, popping the cork free of the bottle. You poured the first glass of white wine and handed it to Rarity. She magically levitated the drink from your hand, thanking you. After you poured a glass for yourself, you held it in the air to Rarity's. To partners. To partners, she repeated. The drink was dry, light, and fragrant, but not at all unlike the more affordable wine you and Rarity had shared earlier in the night. There didn't seem to be anything that elevated it above any of the other wines you sampled. If anything, it was a slight disappointment. Perhaps it was the fact that you had not developed your taste for fine spirits, or perhaps you'd held unreasonably high expectations of it. Yet despite this, disappointment was the farthest thing from your mind. The white mare eyed you with anticipation. You knew she hoped the wine was everything you'd expected, everything you'd wanted. You paused and took in her radiant beauty, her heavenly fragrance and immaculate poise. The drink may have been a bit of a letdown, but the company certainly wasn't. How is it? Perfection. The faint glow of a blush appeared upon her cheeks. The unicorn looked to her glass and swirled the wine around before taking a sip. Yes, it's very fine. The two of you spent the next hour recalling the last nine months you'd been partners. Glass after glass, the level in the wine bottle continued to fall. When you reached the last third, the two of you were discussing the ill-advised trip you'd made to a Las Vegas fashion show in the early spring. What you thought had been a clever attempt at getting one of Rarity's dresses featured nearly resulted in your arrest. Rarity laughed as she remembered the details. The look on the security guard's face was priceless. You laughed as well. Yeah, I think you still have a future as a getaway driver. You set the wine glass down on the coffee table, still chuckling, a slight buzz in your head. The white mare had been inching closer and closer to you throughout the evening. 
You still weren't entirely sure of her intentions. She'd always been kind and friendly, but you'd never perceived any real signs of interest in you. At least, not romantic. You turned to Rarity, resting your head on the back of the couch. This is where I try and convince you not to leave. Rarity exhaled lightly, the gentle smile leaving her face. You've met some of my friends and family, so you know how wonderful they are, and how much I miss them. The unicorn leaned back in melancholy contemplation. My cat, my boutique, my sister is growing up so fast. I can't miss that. You were close enough to your parents and siblings to understand. You nodded. You're right. At that point, Rarity's eyes lit up and she turned to you. Why can't you come to Ponyville? You could stay with me. We've covered that. You know how hard it is to get a visitation permit. It's like one in ten thousand. Not if you have some pony's recommendation. I can vouch for you personally. You knew that would certainly improve your odds, but you still weren't sure. Then there's the issue of no monetary exchange. Yes, Rarity agreed, but money's not everything. Not having it is. Rarity exhaled again and magically pushed her mane from her eyes. I told you why I chose to come here, did I not? You remembered asking her on the first day of your employment. For the challenge. Yes, for the challenge. I may not be taking any money home, but I've learned so much about myself and your world, the experiences, the knowledge. The little white mare leaned closer to you, her face inches from yours. Her voice grew quiet. The relationships, these are all priceless. I wouldn't change them for the world. You fought the urge to kiss her right then and there. Her enormous sapphire eyes were locked with yours, glimmering in the muted, artificial light of the living room. The scent of her perfume was almost intoxicating. Her eyelids fell and rose slowly as her beautiful smile returned. At that moment, you knew she was thinking the same thing as you. You took your hand and softly ran it down Rarity's cheek. The mare's eyes closed and she sighed happily, almost as if she'd been waiting months for your touch. As her eyes opened, you found yourself moving closer and closer to her. Rarity leaned forward, planting one of her forehooves on your thigh. The unicorn's delicate lips met yours softly, almost imperceptibly so. At first, you felt her mouth open only slightly, and her tongue traced momentarily across your lips. Before you had a chance to respond, you felt her forcefully push past your teeth, sending her tongue deep into your mouth. Your first reflex was to playfully resist, but you found yourself too enveloped in blissful sensory assault to think straight. Fortunately, your hands seemed to respond to your commands. They gently wrapped around Rarity's neck and back, pulling the little pony into your lap as her tongue continued to explore every corner of your mouth. Rarity broke the kiss, leaving the two of you breathless and scrambling for oxygen. The white unicorn spoke after a brief moment, between breaths. I'm sorry. That was quite forward. You shook your head, somewhat surprised at the scenario unfolding before you. Still, you were loving every minute of it. You ran your fingers through her glossy indigo mane. Why didn't you say anything? She softly ran a velvety forehoof down the side of your neck, studying your face. I wasn't certain about your feelings on the matter. And you had a girlfriend. I suppose I felt it would have been improper. You pulled her into another kiss, this time retaining more of your focus. Your tongue quickly breached her lips, and you were greeted by a variety of subtle and sweet flavors, the strongest being the wine, though it tasted far better out of her mouth. The mare moaned softly, her forehooves running up your chest and snapping around your shoulders. She pressed her body into yours, and you felt her hips rhythmically grinding against you. It wasn't long before another lack of oxygen forced you to break your kiss. Rarity nuzzled against you, kissing your face and neck, her fragrant mane falling over your mouth and nose. Your hands continued to run up and down her unbelievably soft coat. 
Suddenly, a blue light illuminated your tie, and it was pulled from your collar. Buttons quickly started undoing on your shirt as Rarity pried it apart with her hooves. You weren't sure why you felt the need to speak. You're moving fast. Rarity momentarily ceased her advances, her eyes telling you that she understood your concerns. Yes, I have not the luxury of time, but I don't need a date to know that I like you. Her forehooves pulled on your shoulders, a mischievous smile curling her lips. That I want you. What about dinner? Chocolates? Flowers? A guy's gotta be wooed, you know. Rarity leaned forward, her nose lightly bumping into yours. Humor. You nodded, a slight stirring of nervousness in the pit of your stomach. She pressed a forehoof to your bare chest and slowly began to drag it down, her eyes never leaving yours. Rarity's voice was soft, her words like silk. I would like to take this as far as you are willing. The fact that she wasn't of your species, or even of your planet, barely registered in your head. You thought you had seen the limits of her charm, but clearly you were mistaken. Rarity had given you the option of a choice, but there was no question in your mind. You wanted her, and she knew it as well as you. There's not much space on the couch. Without a word, the unicorn lightly kissed you again and slipped off your lap, returning to the floor. She walked ahead slowly as you got to your feet. She stopped just outside the entrance to your bedroom, looking back to ensure that you were still watching. Then she smiled seductively, swinging her tail and briefly revealing a flash of pink tucked away in the white curves of her flank. You followed her into the room, never having seen a display so motivating. A single reading light illuminated the hypnotizing scene before you. Rarity was already gracefully reclined on your bed, her tail covering much of her lower body. As you made your way to her, a blue light illuminated the unicorn's horn, and you felt the remainder of your buttons undo. Your shirt was pulled from behind, and another force tore your belt from you. You sat down at the edge of your bed, positioning your upper body above the mare. Rarity sat forward, eyes running over every inch of your exposed body, her blush deepening. She kissed you deeply as her eager forehooves ran up, down, and across your bare skin. It wasn't long before you felt them run down your stomach and over your groin. She wrapped her tongue around yours as she magically undid the buttons and zipper on your trousers. You broke the kiss, gently stopping her advancing hooves and bringing a hand to her rosy cheek. Ladies first. Rarity briefly hesitated before leaning back, her cheeks growing redder, her breathing slightly quickening. Such a gentleman. She slowly, deliberately ran her tail off of her body, sliding it over your hands and thigh. Once the last of the indigo obstacle had been moved, you viewed the magical creature in her entirety. Despite the fact that you had seen Rarity without her clothes, despite the fact that she was completely alien to your species, the sight still captivated you. It was the little pony at her most vulnerable, her most intimate, and truly her most breathtakingly beautiful. Rarity moved shyly on your bed, curious as to why you'd gone silent. What is it? Your eyes continued to wander across her figure. Just taking a mental picture. You hadn't even finished your sentence when a pillow lightly struck you in the face. Rarity wore the most innocent expression. You'll pay for that. She stretched on the sheets, obviously growing more comfortable in your presence. Mmm, I very much hope so. You leaned down, planting kisses on the side of her neck and just beneath her ear. You traced your thumb and index finger around the base of her horn before tightening them around it. Rarity's eyes closed and her breathing was shallow. Using your free hand, you started walking a pair of fingers down her chest. You rubbed her horn as your other fingers continued their march south. With each step taken, you felt an increasing warmth. Every time a finger pressed into her soft coat, you felt the mare's body slightly recoil in delight. 
It only took a moment more for your fingers to reach the end of their journey. Rarity's eyes slowly opened as you approached her marehood. Considerable heat was radiating off of her, and she was already slightly wet with anticipation. You could almost feel her disappointment as your fingers abruptly stopped and performed an about-face, retreating upwards on her body. Rarity's pleading eyes met with yours. You smiled nonchalantly, your free hand running from her cheek to her forehead and around the base of her horn. You kissed her lightly on the lips, and slowly sat up, moving yourself to the end of the bed, one hand still climbing her body, the other rubbing the outside of her flank. Despite your teasing, Rarity seemed to be enjoying herself immensely. Her body was like clay in your hands, following them as they flowed around the curves of her physique. Just as the pair of fingers climbed to her neck, you slowly dragged them downwards, drawing a pair of parallel lines in the center of her alabaster coat. Once again they approached her marehood, and you felt her back curve upward as she inhaled. At the last moment, your fingers spread apart, and you traced two lines around the pink slit in her dampened fur. While you knew this wasn't what she wanted, her hips still recoiled and her hind legs bucked softly. She gasped, a slight tinge of frustration in her voice. She looked to you again, her humorless expression telling you that she knew precisely what you were doing. You feigned ignorance, shrugging, before lowering yourself on the bed and stopping just short of her hind legs. The scent of the unicorn's arousal was heavy and meshed with her perfume, creating a fragrance that threatened to drive you mad with desire. You wanted nothing more than to taste her, but you weren't quite ready to stop having fun. Calming your mind, you ran your hands up the inside of her thighs, kneading her muscles slowly, and you leaned down, your mouth opening. Rarity was once again watching intently, her breathing quickly increasing. Inches away, you changed direction, pitching upwards, your lips coming into contact on her stomach. Must you keep teasing me? Rarity could barely string a sentence together, your hands giving her minor contractions as they continued to massage her hind legs. You kept them just outside her most sensitive area. You retracted one of your hands and propped your head up, innocently smiling. You couldn't help but enjoy the scent on your fingers. Didn't I say I'd make you pay? Th this is... Uh... Your other hand interrupted her again. This is about the pillow? All I need is an apology. The same pillow crashed into the back of your head with twice the force it had carried earlier, but this time, as it rebounded off of you, Rarity caught it in midair and brought it down on you repeatedly, again and again. Your hands instinctively rose to your defense as you dove into cover behind the mare, seeking sanctuary from the polyester-filled attacks. You should apologize! She pinned the pillow over the back of your head, her voice a combination of amusement and frustration. Okay, okay, sorry. You conceded, head trapped, voice muffled by the confines of the pillow. Rarity removed the pillow and you sat up on the bed, one of your arms supporting your head. The white mare was smiling, but you knew her well enough to know that she wasn't entirely amused. You knew she would have expected a more serious approach, especially since it was your first time together. Mentally, you resolved to do better. The last thing you wanted to do was disappoint her. I am sorry, Rarity. You reached over and pulled the angelic little figure close to you and into an embrace. Rarity buried her face into your chest. She inhaled, taking in your scent, and sighed, her body relaxing in your arms. I'm nervous. I joke when I get nervous. I know, darling, the white mare replied, looking up at you. It's one of the many reasons that I like you. You delicately ran an index finger between the lips of her marehood and whispered to her, Let me make it up to you. Rarity's body shivered at your touch. She nodded, biting her lower lip. You kissed her lightly. Stay right there. You moved back down on the bed, your hands the first to make contact with her body. One caressed the alluring curvature of her flank, 
while the other ran from her lower abdomen and up her chest. This time you didn't spare touch, force, or expression. She would know and would feel everything that you felt for her. The little white mare spread herself confidently, beautifully, over the sheets of your bed. Her moaning was initially soft, though she slowly grew louder as she allowed herself to indulge in your touch. Without the threat of further teasing on her mind, she completely lost herself in the pleasure. You lightly traced a pair of fingers down and up her marehood. Rarity gasped, her eyes shooting open. You bent down, kissing her stomach, and slowly slipped your index finger inside her. You felt her abdomen contract beneath your lips, and she let out a breathless moan. Smiling, you kissed her lower, your middle finger following the first into the warmth. Rarity barely contained herself, legs trembling as she bit down on her lower lip again. You pushed a little deeper each time, feeling the building heat and her body contracting around you. Gently, you spread your fingers apart and ran your thumb over the little pink bump near the top of her glistening marehood. The unicorn cried out in delight as she thrust her hips into your fingers. After a few minutes, you replaced your thumb with your lips and tongue, a move that only made Rarity more vocal and caused her hind legs to buck into the air. You could tell that she was barely able to hold on. You spread your fingers again and drove your tongue deeper into her. Oh, Celestia! Rarity's back arched as she drove her hips into you. Her head snapped back into the pillow, indigo mane cascading down her face. The pleasure made voluntary movements all but impossible for the mare. She laid back, contractions rocking her body, her breathing labored and deep. You continued running your tongue up her marehood, tasting the fluids as they rolled down her lips. It wasn't long before she pulled away from you, rolling onto her side and crossing her hind legs. I'm sorry. She spoke, breathing rapidly, contractions still interrupting her. I'm just very sensitive. You crawled over the mare and kissed her again. After you separated, you gently brushed the disheveled mane from her eyes. You have nothing to apologize for. The white mare placed a forehoof upon your cheek, a heavenly expression written in her eyes and across her face. She was blushing deeply, small beads of perspiration forming on her coat. You lay down next to the unicorn, taking her in your arms and running your hands through the silken strands of her mane. You held her tight, listening as her breathing slowed, and she relaxed. That silver tongue of yours, she remarked, looking up at you, dreamily smiling. Twilight was right about you humans. About what? It's not important, she replied. The mare started grinding her body against yours. What is important? She broke free of your embrace and began kissing your neck and chest. Is picking up where we left off. Rarity climbed on top of you, and you found yourself face to face with the little unicorn. The beautiful creature you'd known for grace, poise, and collectedness had transformed before your eyes. She looked down at you, her mane wild and untamed, brilliant sapphire eyes positively burning with desire. She slowly began rubbing her mare hood over the aching bulge in your trousers. You felt her magically pry the garment open. Then she leaned forward, kissing your neck and whispering into your ear, Are you going to stop me again? You shook your head, the simplest of words eluding you. Marvelous. A sparkling blue light enveloped Rarity's horn, and your socks were pulled from your feet. They zipped off of you and soared into the wall. Rarity kept her eyes fixed on yours as she slowly pulled your trousers down around your legs. Once they were free from you, she launched them off the bed, where they tumbled into a pile near your other clothes. Again, the white mare ground her body against yours, your underwear growing damp with her excitement. She kissed you on the lips. If you'll excuse me. She started to turn around. You tried to sit up, but she gently stopped you with a forehoof, guiding you back into the pillow. You'll prefer this laying down, she said with a wink. Trust me. 
She turned around again, her horn glowing as the pair of underwear were gently pulled from you. They were dropped over the edge of the bed, and Rarity paused. Her eyes ran across your body, starting from your neck and working down the chest, stomach, and beyond. Rarity's voice was faint. You humans have the most fascinating beauty. She stepped over your legs, circling around you. Such unique form and function. Now who's got the silver tongue? Rarity turned to you with a seductive smile. Who indeed? She gracefully took a seat to your side and draped her forehooves over your leg and stomach. She leaned down, her eyes fixed on your erection. You could feel her breath as she neared. She gave it a light, playful kiss before making herself comfortable. She took one more look at you and bent forward. Her tongue made contact with the base of your shaft. She dragged it upwards, causing a pleasurable sensation to course through your body. The mare continued moving her mouth up and down, coating you in her saliva. She sat up, her open mouth hovering over your tip. You could just barely feel the warmth of her lips. Each time she exhaled, chills ran up your spine. For a moment, you thought she would subject you to the same teasing you'd given her, but your worries disappeared as she slid her mouth over your manhood. She leaned forward, pressing you between her tongue and the roof of her mouth. You gasped, trying to sit up before gently being pushed back into the pillow by her magic. Rarity continued to rise and fall rhythmically over you. Just as you were starting to get a handle on the pleasure, she brought herself down with considerable strength, forcing your erection into her throat. The brutal surge of pleasure briefly caused you to recoil. After a moment, you recovered, bringing a hand to her head and running it through her mane, trying to focus on something else. Rarity slowly drew herself off of you and looked up with a smile, a string of saliva still connecting her lips and your manhood. The white unicorn rose from her position and took a seat between your legs. As she planted her forehooves on your thighs, you felt her magically press your erection upwards. Then she leaned forward and dragged her tongue across your testicles, before lavishing more attention on your shaft. She used her magic in combination with her mouth, massaging you in any area that wasn't being covered by her lips. The pleasurable torment of Rarity's oral skills was quickly becoming too much for you to endure. Your shaking body tensed and your hand tightened unconsciously in her mane. Rarity sensed your movement and sat forward, her intention to bring her mouth down on top of you. The blissful shock of release impacted you a second later. The first shot of semen struck the outside of her lips before she had a chance to make contact. Unperturbed, she bent down, wrapping her lips around your shaft as further contractions completely rocked you with unbelievable pleasure. Each time a stream left your body, you felt her tongue lapping against you as she swallowed. When Rarity was quite satisfied that she had emptied you, she separated from you, her mouth still slightly open, a white trail of your seed strung between her lips. Different. She remarked thoughtfully before licking up the remainder of semen. She looked up at you, smiling. Though not without its charms. You weakly sat up. What did I do to deserve you, Rarity? The mare delicately wiped her mouth with a forehoof. Is that a rhetorical question? I don't know. You replied, sinking back into the pillows. I can't think straight. Rarity giggled. So much for your charm and wit. The mare playfully prodded your still erect shaft with her hoof. Though it appears you're not entirely spent. You sat up again, your mind clearing somewhat. How much did Twilight tell you about us humans? Rarity idly rubbed your thigh with a hoof. Enough to know that many humans can continue even after. Is she correct? Maybe, you replied coyly, with sufficient motivation. Immediately, you felt a magical force push you down, back into the pillow. The white unicorn climbed over your midsection, her smile growing. 
Well then, let's see what motivates you. She slowly crawled upwards on you, dragging her tongue across your body. Your erection pressed into the warmth of her chest as she moved forward, drawing a line down the alabaster coat of the mare. A feeling like electricity coursed through every nerve ending in your body. You couldn't help but gasp in pleasure. Rarity's tongue rolled up your chest and onto your neck where she stopped at your ear. She gently nibbled on you as the lips of her marehood slipped back and forth over your shaft. You felt her warm breath against your cheek as she exhaled. Sufficient? she asked. You responded by wrapping your arms around her. One hand glided into the curvature of her back while the other landed on the top of her flank, just in front of her tail. As you slowly began to bring her down, the white mare aligned herself with you. You felt yourself pressing at the lips of her marehood. A little more force, and you slipped into her. Rarity gasped into your ear, and her forehooves pulled on your shoulders. You slowly pushed deeper as the white unicorn continued to lower herself. Soon you reached the end of your length, and you found yourself pausing. You relished in the heated, constricting confines of the mare. Rarity's little body trembled in ecstasy around you. Her lips met yours in an open mouth kiss. You began to draw yourself out before pushing back in with more force, struggling to go deeper. Blissful pleasure rang out in your head and across your body. Rarity broke the kiss, crying out as she drove her hips into yours. Your hands slid up between her shoulder blades, and you pulled her into a fierce embrace, her chest pressing into yours. You felt the little mare's heart beating frantically against yours as you thrust yourself deeper and deeper into her. Rarity's hooves dug into your back as her walls clamped down around you. Her hind legs bucked at your sides, and her breathing slowly grew labored. Sweat began to roll down her face and neck in beads. You could tell she was tiring from the position she held on top of you. You slowed yourself, running a hand up her cheek. Just a minute. Rarity sat up, looking down at you with concern. Is there something wrong? You shook your head, moving over and shifting your body weight to the side as you gently lifted the unicorn onto your pillow. Once she was comfortably situated on the bed, you took a position over her. You pushed the indigo mane from her eyes once again. Better? She kissed you. Always the gentleman. You leaned forward, pressing yourself into her again. This time you moved slower, more deliberately. Your free hand ran through her damp mane. Rarity looked up at you with a faint smile. But part of her seemed to be elsewhere. There was a focus in her eyes, a nearly tangible intensity that radiated from her. You were about to say something when her horn began to glow. A luminous blue trail of light reached out from her horn and touched your forehead. Immediately, an odd sort of calmness washed over you. It was a feeling that left you numb and detached. You still possessed control of your body, but felt as if it was at a distance. Despite the strange sensation, it was still curiously pleasant. Rarity's sapphire eyes suddenly met yours, and you felt yourself spinning. A shocking sense of clarity ran through your head. You weren't sure how, but you could feel your mind, emotions, and thoughts connecting with the unicorns. It was an indescribably profound intimacy that was all at once captivating, frightening, and liberating. Her eyes fell as you watched her quickly approach the end of her endurance. Rarity reached for you. You bent forwards, allowing her forehooves to wrap around your neck. You pulled her closer to the bed, her muscles repeatedly contracting around your manhood. Her building heat quickly sapped any resistance you thought you had left. Her back arched, and she cried out breathlessly. The blue light vanished as a jarring wave of pleasure rushed through every nerve in your body. Your arms and knees buckled, struggling to keep you from collapsing on the white mare. You thrust yourself into rarity again and held your place, releasing deep inside of her. She held you tightly, kissing you with force and passion unlike anything you'd ever experienced. Exhausted, 
You drew yourself out of her, a trail of your seeds slowly flowing onto the sheets. You took a place behind the mare, squeezing together over the pillows. The two of you took a moment to catch your breath. You seized the opportunity to admire the little unicorn. She'd never appeared more beautiful to you. Rarity continued to hold her forelegs around your neck. Still breathing deeply, she magically pushed the sweat-laden mane from her eyes and kissed you lightly on the lips. Shimmering blue light enveloped the sheets of your bed, and they were slowly brought over the two of you. You slipped your hands around the mare's midsection, bringing her closer. You briefly looked up at her horn. What was that? The mare simply smiled. Magic. The two of you lay together in blissful silence. Rarity continued to watch you quietly, though you could see her gradually growing sleepier. No further discussion or elaboration took place, though you had questions. You wanted to know when she planned on leaving and how you'd reach her in Equestria, but you couldn't bear the thought of spoiling the moment. Rarity's breathing grew steady and silent. Her eyelids fell, and she drifted off to sleep. You told yourself you'd see her in the morning, and when she was ready to leave, you'd be there to see her off. Content in your decision, you allowed yourself to fall asleep in the unicorn's embrace. After what felt like five minutes of sleep, the unpleasant sound of gridlock on the freeway stirred you from your slumber. You opened your eyes, turning in bed, and reached for the white mare. But you were alone. You tiredly sat up and rubbed your face, looking for your alarm clock. It was a few minutes before eight. Damn it, you muttered, stumbling out of bed. The cool morning air forced you to retrieve a pair of underwear. Rarity? You called out, still rubbing the sleep from your eyes. You headed for the bathroom. Please tell me you're here. There was a part of you that thought last night must have been a dream. But every kiss, every touch, every wonderful moment was so burned to your memory that you were certain it was real. You called her name again, but you were only answered by silence. You left the bedroom and checked the entrance. Her clothes and shoes were nowhere to be found. Defeated, you sat down on the couch. As you attempted to clear your head, a familiar scent crept up to your nose. Rarity's ethereal perfume was still clinging to the couch cushions. You leaned forward, realizing that there was a folded piece of paper propped against the bottle of white wine. Your name was written across it in delicate script. Beneath the bottle was a sealed envelope and the check you'd received last night. You unfolded the note. Please forgive me. I had not the heart to wake you. You seemed far too peaceful to disturb, and after last night's festivities, I wasn't certain how long you'd sleep. I simply couldn't delay seeing my family and friends any longer. I hope you understand. I've taken the liberty of preparing a letter of recommendation should you decide in pursuing a permit for visitation. I truly hope you will consider it. I've met many humans throughout the last year, but none of them were like you. You are special, very much so, and Equestria would be blessed to have you. Regardless of the choice you make, I am certain this will not be the last time we see each other. Yours, Rarity. You leaned back in the couch, sighing. You already missed her, but the prospect of leaving Earth was still a somewhat intimidating proposition. Not only would you be forfeiting any chance of making money, but you'd also be submerging yourself in a world, a culture, a people entirely different from yours. But Rarity had done it. She'd entered your world without fear or hesitation, and it had changed her life and yours in the process. The more you thought about it, the less and less the money seemed to matter. And Rarity's generous bonus was enough to free you of your debts and obligations on Earth. You set the note down, your mind made up. You returned to the bedroom to retrieve your phone. Upon unlocking it, you realized that Rarity had changed the background before she left. It was a photo taken from beside the bed, an image of the white unicorn kissing your forehead as you slept. You smiled and launched into the web browser. 
After a quick internet search, you found the number and dialed. A female voice entered the phone. Equestrian Visitation Office, how may I direct your call? Yes, you spoke, holding up the envelope. I have a letter of recommendation. Who can I speak to about getting a visitation permit? was really sweet, wasn't it? Yeah, this dude's definitely me in more ways than one. Uh, well, like I said, I hope you all had a good time with this one and uh, enjoyed it as much as me. Overall, I uh, apologize for the length, but I think it was worth it. So next time, I'm planning on doing yet another pretty recent fic called Bale, so be on the lookout for that, hopefully soon. Till then, Mass Brohoof, and every pony have a great day. Later.